gentlemen. What the world has been waiting for, what the world needs now, the one, the only, amazing, original, Johnny Blades. Often imitated, but never duplicated. There's Johnny. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you all to the original Johnny Blades show. It's always great to be here as I blaze right in with my karate kick. Let's have a blazing hot fun time. Success is like getting pregnant. Everyone congratulates you, but nobody knows how many times you got screwed in order to achieve it. It has been said there are no problems, only opportunities. So the next time you get pulled over, just tell the officer, I wasn't drinking, I was taking advantage of an incredible opportunity. Don't just stand there doing nothing. People will start to think you're the boss or the owner. After 40 years of hard work, a man was able to retire with $10 million, which he had saved through diligence, initiative, thrift, efficiency, and shrewd investments. And he had an uncle who died and left him $10 million. A loyal employee marched into his boss's office asking for a raise, and the boss replied, the short answer is no. And what is the long answer, the employee asked. Absolutely not. No chance in hell. No go, now go back to work before I fire you. A young couple were looking for a room for the night, and the man behind the desk said, there's one room left, 50 bucks a night or $25 a night if you're willing to make your own bed. Okay, we'll make our own bed, the couple replied. Good. I'll get you some nails and wood. You can start work at once. We have a blazing hot fun show with a special guest. She is a multi-talented singer, songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, hypnotherapist, and artist coach. Please give a big warm welcome and say hello to the one and only Elisa DiNapoli. Yeah, there you are. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Elisa. Hey, welcome to the Amazing Richard Johnny Blaze Show. It's great to see you here. Yes, good to see you finally. Well, not in person, but you know, <laughs> on the other side of the screen still. But oh, actually, yeah, you got a beautiful smile, and you're yeah, you're far, you're the farthest place in the web. I mean, I've interviewed people all over: New York, Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, yeah, Florida. not New Zealand though. <laughs> now you're New in Zealand, New Zealand now. That's correct. Yes, yes, and that's indeed. a twenty-hour difference. I know it's four o'clock your time over there on Sunday. <laughs> oh sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Okay, well, great. It's good to see you there, Lisa. Uh, hey, Lisa, uh, give me a rundown, you know, give me an idea of uh, the Elisa DiNapoli story. How did you get started in entertainment and, and give me the story and the whole rundown and where are you from? Yeah, well, I mean, I am Italian originally. That's where I was born. Uh, but I've been kind of glo globetrotting uh, the world. Um, so I've lived, you know, 12 years in New Zealand and 11 years in the UK. And I've lived uh, in Ireland, you know, all uh, you know, quite a lot of places um, for long extended periods of time. But yeah, my two loves, I guess, in life, uh, equally, I equally love music and psychology. They're my two things, you know, uh, well, personal development on one side and, um, and music on the other, which I think actually marry quite well together. And um, I got started uh, when I was quite young. I used to write poetry. And then um, during um, my um, 16 year, I think when I was 16, I uh, was in a competition, you know, in Rome and for poetry and realized that, yes, poetry is great, but not a lot of people at the time were interested. I think now there's a bit of a revival, like luckily, but at the time it was really a, my other love. And it was like, wow, I was watching a show by um, just another fellow student who was doing a cover of Led Zeppelin, Baby, I'm Gonna Leave You. And I was like, oh my God, that's it. I'll write songs. Um, and so I I started uh, learning um, instru more instruments. I, I, I started learning the piano. And, you know, I had tried other other things that would help me or I hoped would help me. You know, I tried, you know, the classic Oh, I'll just, you know, drink some wine before the performance. Wrong. You know, that would just just backfired so badly. You know, at one, at one point and one day I, I got, I, I wasn't drunk, but I just drank this couple of glasses of wine and I went blank and I just, 
actually had to run away in the middle of a song because I couldn't remember anything. I could suddenly I couldn't remember my own song, the the chords I was playing, and I ran away in shame. It was just terrible. I was like, okay, I'm not gonna do that again. And then I tried, you know, um, to take like beta blockers and and I I, be, I felt like I was a bit of a robot, you know, looking at myself performing and not feeling anything uh, of my songs, and that wasn't good. You know, so I tried uh, improv that helped um, quite a lot in terms of being in the moment, but it didn't help me completely, you know, fully. I still was really nervous before and after. Uh, and then I thought, okay, hypnotherapy. Okay, well, I'm a hypnotherapist, you know, I should try hypnotherapy. <laughs> of course. And so then I did that, and that really actually helped. It was like the first thing, finally did something. And but it did it didn't help like 100%. It was like oh kind of 70%. Um, I only had three sessions with a colleague, and then I thought okay well but this is very good because it's 70% is much better than zero or one or ten. Um, but there's more to this because this is just one person. So then I started like really researching the issue, you know, researching what was there available and the different uh, therapists and what are they doing. And then I started applying their techniques on my clients. And then I was like, this is working. And so I found like a way that would help most of my clients um, to, to get a lot better. And then I thought, well, I have to use these techniques myself, you know, because this is the way to go. Like if it's working for them, it's going to work for me. And then it did. And that really, you know, um, at that point I realized, I don't have to keep up music. In fact, uh, I don't have to like pretend to be two people actually i need to have the courage to show who i really am and i am not only one thing you know i am all of these things so that's when i embraced um both my names and you know and felt a lot better performing you know not to say that suddenly i'm like the most uh you know confident performer in the world but i'm like that have got moments that I'm really, really am. and then when i'm not i don't take it so seriously anymore you know so i can i can just kind of room with the flow. So that's wonderful. You were able to over to turn your scars into stars, to turn any problems that you had into a positive and actually develop confidence. How would you say you were able to do that? I mean, with all that stress and all the aggravation that you had, what techniques would you say caused you to, to change from uh, unconfident, stressed and nervous to actually having confidence and, and being able to to have fun and have a, and really feel great, great and positive about your performing? Yeah. Um, so what was uh, what changed is my attitude, uh, not only my attitude, my way of thinking about performing um, and, and actual, um, you know, um, experiences uh, that were positive. Um, and the way that I got to that point was through changing my subconscious, because, you know, talking about stuff like this, like any other emotionally based problem, is not enough you know you're talking with your rational mind analyzing a problem that's not gonna help you um long term you know it will help you maybe a little bit it might it might take 25 years i don't know you know it might help in long if you keep doing it for a really long time but for me it hasn't it hadn't worked what did work was really addressing the issue at a subconscious level that's why Hypnosis was a big part of this because it's a way it was a way to really get into the nitty gritty of what's going on. And what was going on for me was a huge anxiety about uh, judgment and perfectionism, you know, like, oh, I need to be perfect. If I'm not perfect, then I'm not good enough. If I'm not good enough, then people are going to think, actually, I'm crap, you know, like, and what am I doing here? I should be at home and do something else. I have no right to be here and all of this. So the the judgment kind of um, uh, mindset needed to be changed, and I need, but you know, I didn't know how, what else was there, right? And so through through hypnosis, I discovered a different mindset, a completely different way of looking at performance, which is like, it's not about me, it's not about me at all. People don't care about me. People care about what I am uh, singing playing uh or if i was doing an interview like this they care about what i've got to say they don't care about me you know it's not about me 
So the moment I was able, um, what they also want is that they want to, you know, if it's an interview, they want to learn something. And if it's a, a performance, well, they want to enjoy themselves, right? Right. And, you know, if I am not enjoying myself, they're not going to enjoy themselves either. So it's about me taking care of the audience and actually um, actually becoming almost egoless. You know, it's about like becoming a hollow reed, a conduit for the the song the, that needs to come through me so that I am expressing it out there. I'm focusing only on the emotion, you know, the story, if I'm telling a story, the notes, if you like. And um, I'm forgetting about me. I'm just an instrument, if that makes sense, an instrument of the song. So you're enjoying what you're doing. You're not worrying so much about what other people are thinking. You're just wrapped up having a good time and, and doing your best in whatever you're doing. Yeah, and not worrying about mistakes either, because for me, it was right. a big thing was about, oh, I have to be perfect. You know, and nobody is perfect. Like, it's not possible to have a performance that's flawless. You know, maybe once in a blue moon, you're going to be able to have an absolutely stunning, wonderful, perfect performance. But let's face it, most time, not going to happen. No but that's, that's for sure. No one is. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. But nobody even wants to see it because people are not interested in, uh, uh, you know, they want if, if they wanted something perfect, they probably would buy a CD, you know, or listen to an MP3. That's going to be perfect to a point. Um, but if they're going to, to see a person perform, well, they want a real person. You know, they want to see that, um, the rawness, you know, they want to really, they, they don't care about a robot, you know, just repeating the lines in this perfect way, never going out of, you know, they've never... Uh, singing out of tune, you know, obviously you don't want to sing out of tune, but even if you make a mistake, like the point is to just so not take it so is, seriously. Yeah, mm -hmm. perfection is impossible. Besides, it's too mechanical. You want something that has feeling and passion and exactly. enjoyment and entertainment. That's what you're looking for. You're not looking for a robot. That's exactly, right. exactly. But for me, you know, it, it, didn't, it didn't occur. You know, I was just not like, no, you know, I have to be this because if I'm not, basically very black and white, you know, if I'm not perfect, then I'm, Terrible. Okay, okay, now on these techniques that uh, the subconscious and would you say you self hypnotize yourself or would you credit this to uh, maybe going to having somebody else hypnotize you uh, in on the subconscious? How would you say that that came from yourself doing self hypnosis or having another therapist um, hypnotize you? Okay, well, first of all, I have to say all hypnosis is in a way self-hypnosis like we all hypnotize ourselves with the help sometimes of somebody else in something in in these event you know in the case of uh, this problem um you may want to start with somebody else because it's very hard otherwise to um to see clearly what you need to do you know you're so inside the problem that it's really hard it's like a fish in water and it just doesn't see the water so it it might be better at the beginning, at least, to get some um, someone else to help you. But they always are a guide, you know, where you hypnotize. You hypnosis is a skill, you know. It's not some kind of magical thing that happens to you. It's something that you learn how to do for yourself, and another person being there and helping you, guiding you through. It's like you know, for example, if you go into a um, you know a unknown ter territory, you know, a new land, and you've got a guide. A guide can show you, uh, okay, go here, go there. This is, you know, you want to go to this city, take this road. But at the end of the day, you need to take the road yourself. You know, you, you can't, the guy can't do it for you. What it sounds like from what you're telling me, you went to a therapist first to get help. Then eventually yeah. you were able to do it yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You got to get help from someone first before you can help yourself and then and self-hypnotize is what you're saying. Well, I mean, you know, like in, in, in my book, I explain how to do it for yourself. So it's not like it's impossible. You can. But again, you still need some guide, you know, some guidance. You know, maybe the guidance is a, a book that tells you exactly what to do. OK, so you could do it that way. Um, that's absolutely fine. But if you find that that's not enough, then you, it's probably better to find somebody that can help you and knows what they're doing. Well, I know um, you have a book. You do have a book on hypnosis, right? It's called Dare to Be Seen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Talk to me about that, about the book. What it's yeah, I mean, the book is basically about this. Um, it's about 
me finding uh, all these techniques, you know, after helping hundreds of people with this problem, I thought, okay, well, now, um, you know, there's only so many people I can help in during, during my week, you know, I only have so much energy. Uh, I can't see ton, tons and tons and tons of people. So I thought, okay, well, now that I know these basic techniques that work uh, on, on every situation, pretty much, you know, the, um, then how can I put them together to make it possible for more people to be able to overcome this problem? Um, because, you know, to be honest with you, I wish that somebody had helped me 10 years before I actually found help. You know, I would have had a better, um, you know, artistic life. You know, I would have done more shows. I would have had more fun. So I thought, okay, well, um, if I do this, if I put it all together in a course, you know, in a book that has sessions, you know, um, so that people know what to do, well, that would be a way, um, the way to go. So I wrote a book in which I explain, you know, what hypnosis is, what it isn't, how, what subconscious is, how to, you know, the principles to, to correctly speak, um, well, communicate with your own mind. And then I thought, well, I want to include the sessions, the actual sessions, because there's no use in, in just writing a book that's all theory. I want it to be practical. I want people to actually read this and then be able to go, okay, now, tape recorder. I'm going to record an induction, which is the beginning of a, of a hypnosis session, and then I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do next, and then I'm going to go into hypnosis. Uh, but then I thought, okay, yes, that's great, but some people, some people will find it too difficult, you know, it's, it's not, maybe they don't have the time, maybe they're worried that, oh, maybe I'm not going to do it, you know, in a way that's effective. So then I thought, oh, well, I could record the sessions and put them online, you know, and have a kind of a basically an online course with it that if people want, they can have the sessions already there. And these are the same sessions that I would do one-on-one -on -one with a client. You know, um, the only difference is that with a client, I would um, assess first, you know, okay, these are probably the ones you need. And then I've, do, I've delivered them myself. But in the course, I've got them all. So it's like, if you do them all, there's no way that you're not going to get results. You know, they're all there, if that makes sense. So you believe that hypnotherapy is a, it works? You believe it works, right? Sorry, you said it again? What does hypnotherapy work? Do you really believe it helps you and it helps other people? Well, I mean, you know, if I didn't believe that, it, it's not even that I believe it works. I've seen it work, you know, like for 25 years, it just does. You know, of course, you have to want to um, collaborate. You know, you're going to have to be engaged in the process you know you're not a passive subject they're going do it to me you know you need to be part of it if so, you are then it does work yes so not just anyone can be hypnotized right they have to want to be hypnotized correct yes they need to want to be hypnotized some, some people cannot be hypnotized if they have a um attention deficit disorder you know if it's really hard for them to concentrate or if they have dementia or if they're too young you know like before you know around four, five years of age is probably, you know, children are kind of in, in an hypnotic state anyway, um, but it's, it's, they're not able to really follow the process enough. So it's about having enough concentration and then having enough, of course, willingness to engage in the process. So there's all kinds of different, I guess, things that can, uh, hypnosis can be useful for, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all help, kinds of things. Help people with, um, uh, maybe uh, smoking problems or too much drinking uh, or maybe they want to lose weight or they want to develop confidence or tell me about the different areas that you're able to. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've had I've people f with all sorts of problems, uh, you know, for, for <laughs> the last 25 years, you know, it's, it's, it, I couldn't believe, you know, I couldn't believe how much um, if not, this can actually do. Of course, sometimes it cannot, it's not, you know, for everybody and it's not, um, it, it doesn't work with everything. You know, it's not some kind of magic wand. So sometimes hypnosis is, a, it's, it's basically a tool of psychotherapy, you know. So it can be used um, for, in, you know, in a, together with, um, with other therapies. But sometimes, you know, for things like smoking, it, unless there's something underneath you know unless there's like some more deeper issues it's pretty straightforward um uh, but for things like you know um more complicated situations say you know someone has got um an addiction that is 
you know, long standing addiction to, I don't know, heroin or something. Well, they need more support. You know, it's not enough to only have that. So it is in, then very useful. But remember that it is a tool. It is a tool and, and, and hypnotherapy, to be an hypnotherapist, you need to be a bit of an artist in a way. You know, it's, it's an art. Like you need to read the person. You need to understand, listen, understand exactly what the, might be the, the issues underneath the symptoms. Cause it's not just take, let's take, you know, let's get rid of the symptoms and then the cause is still there and then you get other symptoms. So, it's about understanding what's really going on. It's kind of being like an investigator of the mind. That's how I see it. And then applying techniques um, through hypnosis. These therapeutic techniques are many and different ones. Sometimes, you know, we might use um, maybe underlying, underlined by like cognitive behavior principles. Other times it might be something else. So it's like for me, I'm a bit of a, I don't believe in just one one thing this is what i do and it's just this one thing no it depends what is needed you know so but it's it's a holistic process you need to kind of look at the whole person what's going on for them and really i think the key really is listening because a lot of people it's not easy to listen you know it seems like oh you know um, everybody can listen but not really a lot of people don't and they just kind of are eager to just go in there and say this is it this is what we do and and then oftentimes when you have the attitude, it just doesn't work. You know, you, you need to actually understand the person and accept them for who they are and then figure out, okay, I think this will um, help change the story, you know, the story you're telling yourself. Or if there's trauma, then we need to work with trauma. Or, you know, maybe there is no trauma and we can just have a different approach and work with the present and, and, and envisioning a better future and conditioning yourself to rehearse what this better future might be, you know? So I hope that answers your question. Answers your question. So what are the, what's the most challenging when you, as far as hypnotizing um, the different in the areas? I mean, what do you specialize in? Do you specialize in helping people get more confidence, stop smoking, uh, lose weight? Um, well, I used to do those things, but you know, to be honest, I'm more interested in performance, helping artists, um, with performance anxiety, uh, stage nerves, you know, these things that I was talking about before, I'm much more interested in that because it's closer to my heart. It's, it's not that I can't help people with other things, but it's, this is more, um, you know, more passionate about that. And I've invested a lot of my time and energy in that. So I know what I'm doing. Um, I, I know what I'm doing in the other areas too, but um, obviously confidence is part of it. Um, of, 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 you know, developing confidence is an important part of, um, being able to perform um, so that's kind of goes hand in hand um, also I I'm a coach as well and I, I really like to work with artists you know with uh, our artists might be you know a writer or a performer or a singer or you know um, and I work with creativity you know helping people to just um, feel more creative you know if, if they're going undergoing a period of uh, where they feel blocked you know that kind of thing I like to get them you know, their projects started. Um, I'm, I've done a lot of albums, you know, I've, I've written 12 albums. I, that's not a problem for me getting a project finished. You know, I know, I know how to do it. And so that's another love of mine. You know, um, I, I love to help people that I'm like, oh, you know, I'd really like to do this, but I don't know where to start. And maybe they're feeling a little bit unsure. And I like to guide them through so that they actually get it done. You know, so you've done 12 al albums. What about what about as far as music goes? Do you do, do you like to do originals or covers or both? And uh, tell, yeah. talk to me about some of your music. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I about. mean, I love uh, doing originals. Uh, I have done some covers, but mainly I do originals. So um, they span through different kind of genres, but mainly uh, they're kind of indie, indie folk, indie rock. And then I have some cabaret type comedy style songs and I have done some experimental stuff like with electronic music and collaborated with other people but it's so it's always been kind of um I'm not really a mainstream type of uh performer I guess so I've always been interested in a little bit perhaps a little bit of the dark side and and then transforming again the dark into something hopeful so I really like delving into um 
uh, topics that maybe are not, um, you know, <laughs> they're maybe difficult or uh, maybe there's pain or suffering involved, but then I like to kind of get through to the other side. And when I was younger, I, I would write a lot of songs that were very dark and there's a lot of pain involved, you know, it was a very gothic. Um, now, as I, you know, I've, I've grown a little bit into a different direction. I mean, I still love dark music. Sometimes I write um, sort of soundtrack stuff, you know, that, you know, I'm imagining, oh, this could be a great in a horror movie or something like that. But um, but then also there's a comedy side of like, okay, well, let's laugh at this. You know, we, we can't just cry all the time. We need to also um, make, sometimes not take ourselves so seriously. So, oh, there's a bit of echo. Wait a minute. Maybe we'll go. Um, yeah. So, so, so there's different genres that I've been interested in, but it's all mainly uh, originals. And also, right, right now, I'm quite interested in uh, instrumental piano music because I, I took up the piano again, and that's that during the pandemic. You know, that's really saved me from insanity. Um, and, so uh, hot, or did, you, did you teach yourself, or did you uh, take lessons in, in, in piano and guitar and you're multi-instrumentalist, um, multi I know that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I can play the drums as well, but like, you know, not, not like a, like kind of intermediate. Um, so it's a bit of both. I am a self-taught, but I'm also, I also have taken lessons. So I'm a bit of a junkie for uh, courses. I'm always like learning something. I just really love a good teacher. Um, so for example, with the piano, I had a teacher when I was like 12, but it was mainly classical music and I didn't really like it. And then I thought, uh, you know, I really wanted to just compose on piano. I, didn't, I wasn't interested in, in playing Mozart or anything. I, you know, no offense to Mozart, he's amazing. But, you know, it just, just wasn't my thing. And, um, and then last year I found an amazing teacher. And I was like, right, okay, no, not last year, in 2019. And I thought, yes, okay. And that really helped me. And now I'm so happy I can compose on piano. It's just fantastic. But uh, it was an online course. Uh, but the teacher was so good and the course was so good that I was like, no, nah, I can do this. You know, it really helped me to feel, to to build the skills. Um, so, and then with guitar, I had a few lessons when I started, I was 16. And then I just kind of continued by myself. Uh, and then with drums, I had, again, a few sessions to start with, a few, a few um, classes with a teacher, a good teacher. I think it's really important to have a good teacher, at least at the beginning, you know, because it can really help you to, to not make mistakes that then you will carry forever with you. And then I, uh, I was like um, with an online community and learning, you know, with this online community um, teachers. And um, for what concerns singing, is probably singing is the only one that I didn't take a whole of a lot of ses of, uh, of classes because I sang forever, like since I was really young, I just, it was one of the things I was doing all the time, you know, I wanted to be a cartoon, um, a cartoon singer when I was a kid, you know, I would like record cartoon um, uh, you know, the beginning of, uh, of a cartoon and, and, and the end of a cartoon. I was like, oh, I'm going to be a cartoon singer. So uh, I I was always, always singing. And then I I went for some lessons, but I got basically told that I didn't really need them. I was like, what? <laughs> That's weird. Um, and uh, so I thought, okay, well, if you don't think I need them, fine. You know, so I basically once again went online and just started doing exercises by myself and making sure that you know, I would maintain my voice, uh, and that that's that's it, really. And are you? A, what are you? An alto or a soprano? Or what is what is your? Uh, I'm a mezzo soprano, mezzo soprano. Um, oh, so okay. yeah, in between alto and, and soprano. And do you have any? Uh, you have any performances now that stand out? That uh, happy performances you you remember? And also, are there any times when you tried so hard and nothing seemed to work? Any performance or a time maybe when you? You, tr you could not remember the words, and if you did, how did you handle that over some of these? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the best performance, uh, okay, uh, first, the worst performances, uh, well, my worst one was probably the one I said I talked about before, the one where I just uh, froze and couldn't remember anything, um, and I just ran away. So that, that, that wasn't very good. Um, other times when, no, recently, I actually, um, 
I had a performance and um, and everything was great. But then the week after, I had another performance, and unfortunately, I didn't. I was on, on this medication, and I was I wasn't told by the doctor that this medication would make my mouth really dry and that I shouldn't drink alcohol with it. And and um, and so I I was drinking alcohol with it, and not, not much, but you know, like a couple of glasses of champagne or whatever. And my mouth got really dry and I was like, oh God, you know, it was really hard to sing. And and then I had a mind blank, you know, really out of the blue, weird, because it just, you know, I knew this song like the back of my hand. Mm-hmm. And uh, this time though, I just was like, oh, well, you know, I just kind of stopped, made a joke, talked to my fellow, you know, violinist and, uh, and then went, ah, and then it just came back, you know, and, and I just sort of let it happen and it didn't matter. So I, I just didn't take it seriously. Um, but later realized, oh, it's the medicine, you know. Oh, God, if only I'd known that. So that was <laughs> that was something. And then in terms of, like, the best, um, probably would have to be at the Fringe Festival in Edinburgh. So I did the Fringe there three times, um, once with my band, once uh, kind of solo, and once I had like um, a, a comedy, sort of com- musical comedy show. Now that the musical comedy show was really hard uh, to to do because I tried to kind of do a lot myself, and it was a lot of stress. And um, and afterwards, I realized I can't do it by myself. You know, I need help. Uh, and I'm, I'm one of those people that loves to do everything herself. So that, you know, I only have me to, to kind of rely on no one can disappoint me type of, of uh, attitude. But I really realized this is not the way to go. You know, we all need help. We, we can't do things just us. It's too much. Um, so then um, the best performance at the Fringe was with my band. We were, and it was weird because it was completely not planned. We just kind of went there. We, we kind of got invited to do a show, and it was really like we didn't even have to promote it at all. And uh, there was loads of people, and um, and I don't know. I just felt very much, very relaxed, and kind of like, okay, so these people are here to listen to us. They're like friends, you know. We can just do our thing, and I felt, you know, empower. Um, I mean, there's actually been quite a few of those. Um, where I felt completely, um, you know, before the pandemic, unfortunately, because after the pandemic, everything got shut down. But it was just like a feeling of timelessness, if you like. You know, I'm not, I'm not even realizing where I am or what I'm doing. I'm, I'm just completely into the feeling of this song. And then afterwards, I felt like, oh, this is what it's like being a professional. This is what the professionals all they are doing, you know, and it's, it's, it's wonderful. Like, oh, finally, finally I'm getting to this point. <laughs> where was it? Okay, you had a band. Now, how many, if you have a complete band, four or five, how many people did you have in it? And where was this at? Which? Yeah, I did. I don't anymore, um, but I did. It was called um, Elisa Vulpes and the Bat Noir, and it was in Edinburgh. And it was... was in, in Edinburgh, uh, it was Elisa Vultas and the Bat Noir, and it was in Edinburgh, mm. in Scotland. Because I, you know, I moved to New Zealand just six months ago, and uh, before that, I was living in Scotland um, many, many, many years. So yeah, I don't have a band yet here because you know I've just moved, and it takes a long time to get start, you know, um, kind of back into the. And also the other thing is that I'm focusing more on composition these days, you know. <clears throat> Where have you traveled to? Now, you probably travel all over, right? Mm, yeah. Um, I lived in, in, in Dublin. Not in Dublin, sorry. In Ireland, uh, in Galway, um, which is a wonderful place. It's just full of life and so many travelers there and uh, music. You know, it's just Ireland is a wonderful place for music. And I lived in London, I lived in Edinburgh, I lived in Italy, obviously. Um, and then, you know, I've traveled a bit in America, um, but I've never really lived in Asia or anything like that. Not in like... Um, well, so you, you've been all over, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite place? Are there any favorite? Well, I'd have to say, for now, it's New Zealand since I'm here, and it's a lovely 
quiet. I mean, it's very peaceful here. Uh, it's very, it's full of nature. And I feel, to be honest, you know, after the the pandemic and all the political storm in, in, in Europe, it was quite sad. Uh, I didn't want to leave, but at the same time, it was it just felt like it was all going downhill. And I thought, I need to leave, you know, before it really goes downhill. And, and it did. So now, you know, I still listen to the BBC um, every day and go, oh, God, thank God I'm not there, uh, even though, you know, I miss certain things about Europe for sure. You know, I miss certain things for every country that I've been in. You know, every country has got something beautiful to offer. And then there's things that I don't like about that place, you know. So there's no perfect place. My ideal is to be able to travel, you know, and, and go back on holiday and not have to have the pressure of, oh God, I have to deal with the politics or whatever, but actually be like, I'm free to just come back. And I'm very lucky and privileged in that way. You know, not, not everybody can do this. Uh, so I really acknowledge that. Uh, and I'm very grateful for being able to do it. You're fortunate to do what you want, what you enjoy doing. Uh, now you're, who was your, do you have any, uh, anybody's inspired you and motivated you in, uh, in performing and singing and songwriting at all? Yeah, I guess so. I guess um, I've got a few. But I guess maybe the one that comes to mind the most is Amanda Palmer. Uh, I really like her. She, I saw her live a few times, and um, I don't know. I just really like how she's very authentic and genuine, and 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 uh, not egotistical. And well, she now actually lives in New Zealand as well, so who knows? I might meet her. Um, but yeah, I find that she told she you know she's interested in in real issues and writes songs about things that are important because she believes in in whatever it is she writes about. Also, her well, style is quite. Again, I, I didn't get that Palmer. But uh, not... Amanda Amanda Palmer. Oh, Amanda pa Palmer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, yeah. It's like, what is it you about her? You like? Is it her voice? Her performing? What is her anything particular that you? Well, I like uh, I like her style. Um, she kind of writes, especially when she was in the dresses and dolls. She used to um, play piano and sing and have this amazing drummer. Uh, so it was very the songs themselves, the style of the songs was quite cabaret. Quite liked it, but it wasn't just cabaret. It was um, a little bit dark sometimes. She's not afraid of talking about difficult subjects. That's what I like about her the most. I see. Uh, getting back to some of the, okay. First of all, tell me, talk to me about your, you're a coach now. You're a, 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 a motivational coach or a career coach, rather. Talk to me about what you do as a career coach. What are your duties and uh, how do you help? What are your services at all? Well, I'm not a career coach. I am a I'm performance and a creativity coach. Um, so I, I basically help people with a performance, so becoming a better performer, being more confident and all of that, and also um, creativity, so um, helping with creative blocks. Um, I also teach songwriting as well on the side. And um, and so, for example, if someone wants to, has a project, you know, that they want to finish, whether it's writing their book or uh, finishing their album, you know, um, or maybe they're feeling they don't know where to go with their life in this particular moment or their creative project. Um, I basically help get it done. You know, I help create that clarity and be like, okay, this is uh, what's actually important for you right now. Um, but I'm, I'm coaching all sorts of people. Like for example, I'm, I'm coaching a guy, a comedian that has a, a YouTube channel um, to, to find what, you know, um, to create what, he wants to um, to manifest in his life, to be more creative and and also get more satisfaction out of like you know building his his channel. And then you know I've got a client uh, who's a musician and a performer who you know wants wanted to felt quite um not confident and wasn't quite sure where to to go you know where to perform next how to to get over her um the hurdle of sage nerves you know so that i would i would have a client like that and um i had another client who um wanted to get an album done but just you know you know just felt like it was never going to happen so I, I helped this person to like you know hold them accountable and make sure that if there's any obstacles in there they get 
overcome and um and so that he achieves you know the actually getting it done so you know that's sort of the realm that i prefer to work with at present so you like to help you help people achieve their goals is what you're telling me yeah yeah pretty much creative goals whether it be what singing or performing or writing or a little bit of everything or yeah 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 yeah, that's right how do you go about writing a song yourself does a melody come first or the lyrics or how do you um it could be either um sometimes uh well i I do something called objects writing uh which is basically every day i sit down for 10 minutes in the morning usually and i will just uh, open my phone it's got uh, on there's a website called random word generator uh, so then I get a word and I write for 10 minutes uh, on the word kind of um, using my senses so you making sure that the writing involves the sense of sight uh, the sense of smell the sense of hearing and tactile um, and in the any inner sense of, so of my body and movement and then um, after that, I read this and search for titles, you know, just, just looking at possible titles. Um, so I might underline a title and then I get inspired to do maybe another 10 minutes of object writing. And basically a song can, can be born out of that. Other times, so in that case, it would be, you know, writing first. Uh, that was what I used to always do, like just start from the lyrics. Um, but recently, I have started writing a lot of instrumental music for piano, and and that was born out of a different. Funnily enough, I, I wasn't you know trying to write a song. It was more that I was trying to become a better piano player. And so what I would do, what I'm doing at the moment is, I basically ask myself, okay, what do I want to learn? And the, one of the main things for me is to be able to improvise. Um, with other musicians um, and I thought oh well if I have to be able to improvise then I need to know the scales really well and then I need to know the keys really well so I know all of the scales um, but with the keys I thought oh what's a good way to know a key and I thought oh well a good way is to um, focus on a, a couple of specific keys every month so for example this month is uh, F major and F minor and I was like right okay I'm just going to improvise you know progressions on on these and just by improvising these progressions i've come up with cool songs you know just like oh this sounds great um this sequence goes really well with the other sequence what happens if i put them together oh that's kind of neat oh i've got a song <laughs> you know so so it can work the, both ways um so you're experimenting you're doing it different ways yeah yeah and sometimes some things that you don't think may not work end up working what about yeah. the typical days, as, as an entertainer singer, what is your typical day? Uh, how is my typical day? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Um, well, I don't really have a typical day, but I guess, what do I do? Um, usually, I do start, like I said, every day with object writing. Uh, early in the morning. If I do that early in the morning, it sets me up for a good day. Um, sometimes, I... I have time in the morning to play the piano, uh, which is great. When I can do that, that again makes me happy. If I have a client, you know, sometimes I see I see clients from all over the world. So often it's in different time zones, you know, so I might have to see people early in the morning, in which case I can't play the piano early in the morning. So then I would need to see my clients. And then after that, to kind of get myself out of the uh, state of mind of clients and, and coaching and all that, I go for a walk, you know, or do something physical, dance, you know, do something out of the house. And then when I'm back, then I start working on creative stuff again. I'm writing various things as well. I'm writing a fiction, like a short story book at the moment. And um, I'm also, you know, working on a, on a, wor on a journal for, for the dare to be seen. Uh, I'm working on translation for it. You know, it's like there's a bunch of other stuff. And then, and then basically in the evening, I try to relax, be social, read a book. Um, I try to do a lot of things, but sometimes I find it hard to not do anything. Um, and sometimes I really just try to do nothing, to, to switch off, which is something 
I find hard to do, uh, but I also know it's really necessary. Well, you're busy, that's for sure. (laughs) (laughs) You're probably either doing too much or too little, right? (laughs) Yeah, probably that's right. I I think I often do too much, and then I think, oh, no, this is too much, and and then I just cut it all down and do nothing for, like, a couple of days, just like, okay, nothing. You know, to the hypnotism, I wanted to say to you, I was wondering if you ever, what do you think about, okay, have you ever heard of anything? There's a, a hypnotist that I interviewed when I first started doing the show. He's considered the world's greatest hypnotist and Hollywood hypnotist, master hypnotist and Hollywood hypnotist. His name is Kevin Stone. I was wondering if you ever heard of him. Hmm. No, I've heard of other ones, but not him. I mean, the, the, sound, the, the name sounds familiar, but no. I don't yeah, know. he's uh, if you look him up, yeah, he's uh, been on all kinds of shows and very successful and everything. Audience participation, right. he's done audience participation shows. Um, oh, okay, okay. And there's also someone else who's no longer alive, and she was really top in the business when she was, a, and she used to have these in-person shows where people would participate, in, you know, in hypnosis. She was called mm-hmm. a hypnotist, Pat Collins. I was wondering if you ever heard of her. No, I haven't out, but I'm not really like um I'm not really interested so much in the shows. Like, you know, um I find that like I guess my my way is more like clinical practice, so it's quite different. Like um it's wonderful to be able to do that. Um uh, but it's kind of different from what I would be doing in a in a session. Um, that's something you might want to do. Even though you don't do it now, is that something you might consider doing? Yeah, no. I decided. I thought about it, but I decided no. And the reason is that I want. Uh, I think, in a way, those shows are great because they give hypnosis a, a, a you know, a, a visibility. But on the other hand, it can actually backfire too because it kind of gives this idea of hypnosis as some kind of magical, spooky thing, you know, that is done to you. And that's actually not, uh, that's misleading. You know, it's not that. It's not magic. It's not done to you. It's presented that way because it's more entertaining that way. You know, nobody yeah, wants... Entertaining. You know, People go to see those, those shows. She overcame, she was a ner- had a nervous breakdown Pat Pat Paula in her life. And she overcame that and she did those in-person shows on Sunset in Doheny. And she was... Yeah for a long time. I mean, she's no longer alive now, but she was uh, billed as a hip hypnotist, Pat Bowens. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it sounds great. Like, you know, it, it sounds like she's really made, uh, you know, use of it in a, in a positive way. But just for me, it's not for me. You know, I, I'd rather um, not do that and, and kind of be more private. And um, yeah, the, the the limelight doesn't really interest me as much. I, what I do, what does interest me is I just want to, um, you know, be able to do my music, uh, help people, but I, I don't do it, you know, because I want to be famous. You know, it's just, it doesn't really interest me. Well, everybody's different. Everybody's the same. It'd be a boring world, yeah, right? Exactly. Different strokes for different folks. One person's treasure, someone else's trash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I just thought I'd bring that up because, uh, you know, actually, I'm, I don't know if you ever heard of this, but I did, I myself went to a seminar in hypnosis. Uh-huh. And the, it was a place called the Hypnosis Motivation Institute in Darzana, California. I don't know if you ever heard of such a place, but mm-hmm. training what... people to be hypnotherapists. I just went there. I was carry out of curiosity. I didn't become a student. No. Uh-huh. That's where Kevin Stone went. He went there and he did learn from that place. And people yeah. have become they have become hypnotherapists from such a, a place. I don't know if you ever heard of it before. Yeah, I, I came from a wonderful place. And, um, and I, I went to a wonderful school in California myself um, called the Institute, the Hypnotherapy Institute of Northern California. Um, and I believe, like, after doing a lot of research, um, I believe that that's one of the, at least when I did my course, which was 25 years ago, it was one of the best places to learn hypnotherapy. It, it was really, really thorough. And Orman McGill was, uh, he's not dead, but he was a stage hypnotist that um, taught at that school. And Randall Churchill um, has written a few books. Um, and he teaches, well, he's not retired, but he was the director of the school. And, and so I found that that school was really fantastic in that way. It was very, you know, it wasn't like a sens- sensationalist place. Uh, they didn't train people to work with celebrities. There are the schools like that, but it was more interested in just like anybody 
uh, layman, you know, um, anyone being able to treat any anyone after the course. And the, the great thing about this course was that it was uh, the train, a lot of the training, at least when I did it, a lot of the training was done under hypnosis, which is mind blowing if you think about it, because afterwards you would know how to do the job and you wouldn't really know how. You'd be like, why am I able to do these things? And it's because you learned through hypnosis. Now, of course, you know, I think that that's a wonderful way to learn it. But probably after doing that, you probably want to also do um, a more theoretical course, which I did in England. Because that way you've got best of both worlds. You know, you've got the, the practice and then you've got the the theory. You've got the subconscious learning and the conscious learning. And when you put conscious and subconscious together, that's when you get the best results. I see. Well, that sounds interesting. I know you have many testimonials now. You do have, talk to me about some of your testimonials. Uh, and also, you do a, you're, you also do a podcast. Mm. Well, I, I used to do a podcast. I've kind of stopped because it was taking so much of my time oh. uh, that I was like, I can't, I just can't do this anymore. It's, uh, I need help. And I thought, uh, just do other things. But it was fun while I was doing it. I did it for the um, duration of the pandemic when I was in lockdown for a year and a half. Uh, and I would interview Hindi singer songwriters, um, mainly female. Uh, singer songwriters and that was wonderful because I learned um, I don't know it actually really helped me find, find connections uh, mainly in America for some reason I I was uh, I connected with a lot of people in the Bay Area um, and uh, and that was great inspiring for me as well you know um, I forgot the other the other side of your question. You said podcasts, and what else did you ask me? You have quite a few. You have testimonials too of your work. Oh yeah, uh, I mean, in the book, there's like a few uh, in depth case studies, if you like, um, uh, that I kind of explore. Um, let me. I've got the book here with me, so let me refresh. Is, my book. Your book that you're talking about, dare to be dare to be seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's and yeah. that's. Upon your, that's based upon your experiences, right? Your own experiences. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the book is basically about, yes. For example, I did have a drummer. Oh, that, this is interesting. I can't say, obviously, the name of this drummer because he's a famous guy and, uh, I, okay. you know, it's a confidential. But, um, but this guy came to me because he uh, had been in a band uh, some years before. And this band was, band was very successful. Uh, but then uh, they stopped kind of, uh, you know, they, they, they had a hiatus for a while. So he had a family and his mom members of a family. And then, you know, for the first few years of having young kids, they didn't really tour anymore. And then um, time passed and they decided to regroup and uh, have this big world tour. And they were going to play in front of, you know, like thousands of people. And, and the guy came to see me completely distraught because he thought, oh my God, you know, I haven't played in years. I feel really scared. This is a dream come true for me. I really want to do this show, you know, this tour. But I feel completely uh, terrified, you know, uh, that I'm not going to be able to do it. And da -da -da -da, you know, so, so we worked together on um, the issues that he was having and using hypnosis of course and and, it, and and you know afterwards he went on tour and he sent me you know some some great you know uh testimony you know, i'd been on tv and he was like oh look at this look at that and, and i followed him around and, and and thought this this gives me a lot of satisfaction you know because this is a guy who i'm even a fan of the band you know <laughs> like and i want him to succeed i want to see him perform around the world he's a great musician worth my while you know all these years of of, of researching and work really made made it worth my while i see so if you know of course you're, you know you're good you can make good money and make a good living but it sounds like, yeah, you know, you love what you're doing and you put your mm -hmm. mind, heart and soul into it. You feel a, a billion passion. So you get, a, you get a, a great feeling, a good reward out of uh, helping people. 
yeah, especially, like I said, especially actors or drummers or performers or writers, you know, anyone who's, who's, uh, who's uh, you know, creative. But I, I mean, I've helped speakers as well. I've helped people, you know, at work who maybe they need to give uh, presentations, you know, that's that's good as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I just really connect a lot more, I suppose, with, with artists, but that doesn't mean, you know, that I can't work with someone who's not, you know, obviously we all have a capacity to be creative. So you just uh, mentioned to me it was a celebrity, you can't mention the name, but have you worked any other any other celebrities that you can uh, mention names? I don't know. Uh, I have worked with other celebrities, but I unfortunately can't mention their names. Let me think, it. let me think if there's anyone I can say. I have worked, you know, with an actress and uh, writer, um, let me think. Yeah, I mean, I, unfortunately, I, I can't mention the names because it's uh, confidential, you know. Yes, and they've you. they've allowed me to 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 write about them, but but only changing their names so they can't get rec- can't get recognized. I see. Okay. Well, you got to do what you got to do. You don't want to break any laws, that's for sure. No. <laughs> you don't well, people wouldn't and... trust me, you know. If I just named people, you know, the name dropped, uh, then then somebody wouldn't trust me, you know, if they were in that situation where they don't want uh, to be, you know, don't want journalists or whatever to ask about their insecurities, you know, they don't, they they just want their problem solved. I see. So basically, um, this is for you, you love what you're doing, you like to get, you get rewarded by people, I guess, the, the feedback of people's coming back and saying that you were able to help them. Mm-hmm. Does it require now how long does it take in the, uh, as far as you able to help them? Uh, does, it, does it require many sessions? Yeah, no, it doesn't require many sessions. I mean, hypnotherapy is one of the few things that are reasonably fast. Um, if it's about performance anxiety uh, or confidence, you know, um, usually uh, people would come and see me first for a consultation, you know, and then we would... Um, basically decide together what the amount of time that we need to spend together to solve the issue might be an average to give you an average it goes between five six to eight sessions you know it wouldn't really go more than that most of the time having said that i do have some long longer term clients that come to see me for different reasons like it's more like coaching creativity uh, all of that and that's a more long-term process because uh you know sometimes it, well it takes uh action you know they need to take action on things so that uh, it's more of my, you know, it might be one session a month for six months, you know, something like that. So, uh, and some people want ongoing support, which I can offer, you know, when it's kind of, there might be a project and then they finish that project and then, then there's another project that comes and, and then we tackle that. But in general, if it's, if it's uh, most uh, problems with hypnotherapy, unless there's, um, you know, we, we're always looking at one thing at a time, they might take about, between five, six, and eight sessions. I see. I got you. All right. Depends. So, um, anyway, um, I was trying to think. I was going to say. Uh, now, what do you think that the, on the difference between okay, self hypnosis and regular hypnosis, and which you feel is better? Is it better to, to be able to hypnotize yourself or to go in for regular hypnotism? Well, I mean, like I said before, all hypnosis is self hypnosis. It's all about being able to um to help yourself and, and be aware of what is um what are your go to negative mental patterns and self talk. Um certain things cannot really be dealt with on your own. So for example, if you have trauma, it's not gonna happen. You can't really help yourself with trauma, you need help. Um, and you might need more than, than hypnotherapy. You know, might, you might need a trauma therapist as well as hypnotherapy. Um, if, on the other hand, it's something more uh, basic, you know, something more like uh, wanting to, I don't know, like learn how to sleep better, um, you might need a bit of guidance. But eventually, you will be hypnotizing yourself um, because the hypnotherapist is not going to be there during the night to help you with this. You know, um, they can give you a recording that's going to very much help. And at the beginning, um, it would be very good to have some guidance to tell you, okay, this is what's happening. This is what you're doing. This is what you need to stop doing. And this is what you need to start doing. But then 
uh, long term, you can actually hypnotize yourself with that. Maybe you there's know. a possibility. Sometimes people don't realize that they, you know, when they're nervous or stressed before a performance, um, they end up hypnotizing themselves and they're successful anyway without even realizing it. They may not I, even realize that they're doing it. Yeah, I mean, we're always in some kind of state of hypnosis, that's positive or negative. You know, like we watch TV, we're hypnotized into thinking, especially if we're watching ads on TV, okay, oh, that's re- that's basically negative hypnosis. It's not, you know, um, there's no, um, it's not, um, what I'm trying to say, it's like it's a naturally occurring thing where you're watching this, uh, you're very absorbed in whatever it is you're watching, and the message is basically with most advertising, uh, buy this product and you will feel better because actually you're not good enough just as you are. It's quite evil the way I see it. So in the end, uh, repetition makes it really stick. Uh, and then you go to the supermarket and you buy that specific product and you don't even know why. Well, it's because of negative hypnosis in some in some sense. Um, so, you know, um, when whenever we repeat the same kind of scenario in our head, whenever whether it's us doing it, like we're rehearsing, mentally rehearsing a negative, a, a negative situation or a positive situation, we are hypnotizing ourselves and we don't even know it. So it depends, you know, how do you understand hypnosis? Is basically hypnosis is a state in which we go um, naturally, you know, uh, when we drive the car, when we for long distances, when we are reading a book and we're really absorbed in reading that book when we are falling asleep and start fantasizing about things and imagining and remembering things, you know, we, we are also in hypnosis when we are having an argument and we're really highly emotionally uh, stimulated. But the, the hypnosis itself is not what makes, um, uh, what's important, what's important, what do you do with it, you know? So how do you use it? Do you use it positively? Do you use it negatively? Do you do do you not do anything with it? I think, in my experience, I think I sit, I think without realizing, I hypnotize myself on my experience in entertainment. Right? How so? I'll tell you. Um, well, um, I have. I my favorite performer was Elvis. I've always wanted. Uh-huh. To, unfortunately, yeah. it was meant to meet. Well, I guess the concerts were sold out. They're difficult to get into, it, and I didn't want to go by myself, but. Um, you know, when I was first on television, I was told here, the original gong show, you're going to get gong, you're going to lose and fail. I got mm-hmm. mad. I said, you're wrong. I'm wrong. I'm going to win. And I won. Then when I got up and had television uh, specials, I imagined I was Elvis, even though I'm not six feet and I'm not Elvis. I yeah. imagined that and the results were great. We're just, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. You did it. I mean, that's. That's mental rehearsal, you know, uh, a, positive a, mental rehearsal. Yeah, I had a standing ovation. It was put up on the shoulders like the winning touchdown, and he had a whole show dedicated to me. Like, yeah, uh, exactly. And, exactly. Mm-hmm. And and I, had, I a staff got upset with me. They said, if you don't like, you know, I said, if you don't like what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave. They called me back. And the producer I work with, uh, who wrote the 68 comeback, he wrote the comedy for it, Chris Beard, said, first of all, he said, we know what you can do when I want. Then... When I threatened to leave because his staff was rude, I said, if you don't like what I'm doing, I'm leaving. Mm-hmm. Called him back on the phone. He said, Johnny, you can do Teddy Bear. You can do whatever you want. Let me totally take over. And the reactions were like, they were like Elvis the Beatles, the ugly, kissing, screaming, lipstick in the face, jury going to blot him. And it, and it was a Hawaii special. So that was phenomenal. Yeah. And that goes to show that positive self-talk and positive mental rehearsal you're in, you know, a, a state in which you've relaxed, or in a state in which you are uh, focusing inside. You know, you're not focusing outside uh, on externals. Uh, that's that can have amazing results. So, yeah, you're living proof. And that was those were those were unforgettable performances. The yeah. one-time yeah. thing that you're not going to ever forget them, though. But that's what I believe. I believe. So I I didn't realize I self hypnotized myself. Yeah, you know, you did it naturally without any fancy, you know, inductions. And that can happen, you know, that can happen um, if you're lucky, you know how to do it instinctually like you did. Um, other times you might need more formal right. environment. Well, I did actually at the Hypnosis Motivation Institute, I hired somebody to help me, gave me some sessions for trying to, you know, for confidence and everything. He's no longer yeah. alive, but at the time I remember, I remember how he did put me under 
and told me to relax and all the you know things that he that he did. So yeah. that was very helpful. It really was. Yeah. What's your favorite? Let me ask you now. I mean, you, out of all the different things that you do, I know you write. I know you you write songs. You you sing. You're a multi instrumentalist. Um, you help people. You you do coaching for people to help them with their performances. Um, you do a little bit of everything. You're Jack a professional the therapist. Is there any favorite out of them all? Do you have a favorite, or do you like them all equally? Um, I suppose. Hmm. I suppose music is my favorite thing. You know. Um. If. I, but on the other hand, I can get frustrated. Um. If I'm only doing music all of the time. Um. Because it's a very in. You know. It's an intense. Space and sometimes I need a break, you know, I need to kind of clear my mind and do something else. And also because music is all about me and, you know, about how I feel and what I'm thinking. And sometimes it's good to get a break for myself and just sort of focus on other people. So music is what I, I love probably the most, but I couldn't do it without focusing on also psychology, personal development, and helping others, because that keeps me sane. I see. So your favorite is music, but you, you need the others. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Uh, yeah, Elisa, if, how can people, if people want, okay, if people want to get the, this book, uh, Dare to be Seen, if they want to find out more information about how, say they're interested in finding out more. Yeah, sure. Um, well, I've actually created like a, a freebie for your audience um, so that um, if people want to get the book for free, they actually can. Um, and they will find it on my website, elisadinapoli.com slash amazing. So elisadinapoli.com slash amazing. Oh. They will be able to get the book for free. Oh, um, that's very nice. Yeah, I just thought, you know, it would be a good thing to, to get started on this. Um, I also have a, a free master class as well. Uh, uh, for people that maybe don't are not into books as much, uh, that's more like uh, me talking and giving you people um, very very practical um, tips, if you like. To um, like a, there's a performance ritual there and that they can do before the show and explaining why you're getting so so nervous before a show and all of that. So I've got this free master class and that's um, tinyurl.com slash there to be seen master class. So that tinyurl.com slash there to be seen masterclass, and that's free as well. Okay, that's that's nice to know. Uh, if you had, let me ask you something, at least if you if you had to do anything over again in your life in, in your career, uh, would you do anything differently? Yeah, I probably would do one thing differently, and that would be uh, I would probably go and see a hypnotherapist immediately, like when I was eighteen, and resolve this problem, um, and then I would probably go to music school. Um, you know, I would probably go to Berkeley online because I really love uh, that school. I'm doing some courses with them now, but I would have done it much earlier. I see. And um, do you have any, any advice though, for aspiring people who want to be successful in entertainment? What advice would you give them? I guess focus on what you want, not what you don't. You know, okay. always focus on what you want, not what you don't. You know, focus on like you did, you know, focus on, okay, I'm like Elvis. I'm like, you know, who do you want to be? How do you want to perform tonight? You know, how, how what do you want for yourself? What, how do you want to feel at the end of the show? You know, and then imagine that, you know, would you want to feel excited? Okay. What does excited look like? Look like, how does your body stand when you feel excited? You know, how does it, what does your voice do when you're excited? How do you walk when you're excited? You know, how do you, what do you, how do you feel? inside yourself, how would it feel if you were excited, you know, um, if you did a wonderful, inspiring performance? So think about that. Don't think about what you don't want. Oh, I don't want to be this. Oh, I don't want to be that. No, 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 no. Every time that thought comes into your head, just stop and take a deep breath and then go, yes, okay, I don't want this. What would I rather have? And then focus on that. That makes a lot of sense, at least. Yeah, you wouldn't want to focus on what you don't want. You want to focus on what you do want. Uh, do you have any present projects, uh, in Lisa, at all? In terms of music or in terms of other things? It could be music or anything. It could be any other other projects. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, I'm, I'm working on a, uh, on a song uh, called The Night Is Falling. 
I'm uh, basically I'm trying to pitch it for a TV show. I'd love to for the song to be on a TV show, Yellow Jackets, because I love Yellow Jackets, and I wrote the song for it. So I'm really hoping to uh, pitch that, and it would be amazing if it got into the show. But even if it doesn't get into the show, uh, I still really want to make a really cool, dark song. Um, that's you know like I haven't done a dark song for a long time, so that's some that's one thing. Um, the other thing that I'd love that I'm working on is a fiction, it's a, a basically a series of short stories in three different books. Uh, so that I'm hoping that this book, which will be called Fragments, if this is a fiction thing, so it's different from my nonfiction, uh, will be published hopefully later on this year. Let's cross fingers. Um, <laughs> and, um, and then I think um, I really, really would like to put out some piano singles. Um, so that's going to be uh, also I do have another song about the pandemic that I wrote called We Shall Overcome. Usually, um, originally it was called COVID is fun, apparently it is not, but people didn't quite appreciate the irony. So I changed it to We Shall Overcome. Um, so that should be out soon. Uh, that's probably going to be the, the one that comes out the next on my Spotify. And what about now any dream projects you haven't done that you really want to do in the future? Ah, oh, well, I mean, I'd love to write for TV shows. Uh, I'd, I'd love to just do that. That'd be amazing. Um, inspiring TV shows that I like, of course. Um, and I, yeah, just the ones that I'm working on, I'm actually my kind of dream ones, you know, like I'm working on what I really want to do. So that's my uh, my attitude is like if I have a dream I want to make it come true I, I don't just want to dream about it you know so I think about the next step and what's what's the next thing I can do uh, never mind what I can't do and then eventually you know uh, things will take shape well, right you want to be able to not only imagine it but actually be able to do it yeah and exactly so and so far it's worked that way you know um, I've, I, I don't believe in just dreaming and need to take action that's right <laughs> There's an old saying, if it costs people money to talk, they keep their mouth shut after add up to millions of dollars. And it's not what you say, it's what you do. Don't talk yeah. about it, be about it. That's right. Absolutely, man. Do Absolutely. It. <laughs> There's doers, that's right. You're a, you're a doer, at least at Dinapoli, and you, and you have had and continue to have a, a very exciting, uh, entertaining, and inspiring life. Thank you. That <laughs> you are. Thank you. you nice, Absolutely. Yes, you do. Um, if people really want to find out more about you, Lisa and Napoli, uh, how do they go about reaching out to you and finding out on the social media, you know, all the different links? Give us the yeah. links and everything. Um, yeah, I mean, the, I've got two websites. Uh, one is to do with my coaching stuff and one is to do with my music. So the um, the coaching stuff is Elisa Di Napoli, so my name, elisadinapoli.com. And my music stuff is my other name, which is elisavulpes.com. And elisavulpes is spelled E-L-Y-S-S-A-V-U-L-P-E-S. elisavulpes.com. Elisavulpes.com. Yes, yes. It means uh, fox in Latin. Oh, it does. Okay. <laughs> Italian. Yeah, you're Italian. That's right. My yeah. boss's wife, his last name was a Nap Napoli. You're All right. Yeah. Yes. I tell you. <laughs> even though I don't come from that city and never even been to Napoli, but yes, that's my name. That's correct. Well, like I say, I've, I've at least at Napoli, I've enjoyed having you on as a guest. You have been very, very delightful, very entertaining, very insp inspiring. So keep going forward, keep blazing those trails, keep doing that. And I want to thank you so much for being a guest of the amazing Richard Johnny Blaze Show. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It's a feeling's mutual. Uh, anyway, Lisa, in wrapping up the show, I just want to say to all, all my fans and friends, always keep a smile on your face and a song in your heart. Until next time, happy trails and blaze out. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to be a guest on an entertainment talk show, please send us an email at amazing original JB show at gmail.com. All of our guests receive a complimentary DVD of their appearance on the show. Every episode appears on YouTube and Facebook and receives between three and 4,000 views.
And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Amazing Original Johnny Blaze Show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, The Amazing Original Johnny Blaze has just left the building. Good night, and God bless you. Thank you.